On Larry King now, the hilarious Norm MacDonald. So I said, oh, I'll trick them and write a novel and call it a memoir. So do I believe it or not believe it? It's not facts, but it's truth, if that makes any sense. No. Maybe he doesn't want to be president of the United States as much as he wants to be the president of whatever room he's playing that night, <laughs> of which I can understand as a stand-up comedian, which maybe you can understand, because yeah. you go and you speak, yeah. and it's aphrodisiacal. What brought you down, gambling? Well, some, some have said it's been the ruin of me, Larry. The ruin? But I don't. But I did go broke twice, and uh, I must say that it was a very cleansing feeling in a way. Plus, what do you sing in the shower? Willie the Wandering Gypsy and Me by, um, by Waylon Jennings. You were a little weird. <laughs> what uh, character? Liking country music doesn't no, make that's you a weird. Characteristic. You have put me in a shower singing. <laughs> You're the guy that did it. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. He's one of the best. Norm MacDonald, comedian, writer, producer, named by Comedy Central as one of the 100 greatest stand-ups of all time, and many others would say he is the greatest. Norm's new memoir is Norm MacDonald based on a true story. It has been met with critical acclaim as a New York Times bestseller, maybe a Pulitzer winner, and most importantly, he's a longtime favorite of this show. Norm MacDonald, Sonny Bunch, who I don't know, writing in the Wall Street Journal about this book said, based on a true story isn't really a memoir, as the cover claims, it's closer to a novel, a Russian tragic comedy, perhaps Dostoevsky by the way of 30 Rockefeller Center. What did Sonny Bunch mean by that? I don't know. I'm, I think your reading bleeds into your writing, just as anything in your life that you consume bleeds into mm. what you produce. Uh, so, you know, perhaps there were uh, broadcasters that you uh, watched when you were young. Yes. And, and maybe they're now part of you. I'm a great reader of Russian literature and have been since a child. Why were you so enamored of Russian literature? Well, because uh, uh, it's bleak, you know? <laughs> and Because uh, <laughs> I grew up in a sort of bleak area, a rural area of uh, Canada. You grew up poor like I did? Dirt poor, yeah. Dirt poor. Uh, but I, I, now I'm happy that I did, you know what I uh, mean? Because I can enjoy that I'm not anymore. Is this your first book? Yes, sir. Yes. What led to writing it? Well, I always wanted to write a novel, you know, but I knew that I never could because uh, it would just be a novel by a celebrity. So then uh, someone approached me to write a celebrity memoir. So I said, oh, I'll trick them and write a novel and call it a memoir. Like, it's called a memoir on the, on the book, but that's is like it saying a novel? confessions of a killer, but it's yeah. not really confessions. Is this a novel? I'm this like, is a novel, yeah. It's not a memoir. So do I believe it or not believe it? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's not facts, but it's truth, if that makes any sense. No. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, you could either look at your life as a series of facts, or you could look at it more overarchingly as a truth. Which is very easy for me because I'm a person of faith. I know that you are not. So yeah. maybe with you it would be more difficult to, to find a larger, uh, a larger truth that belies all the... But I will still enjoy it. I, I think you will. Without getting the larger truth. Oh, of course, yeah. It's, it's written to be read. And it's very, very funny. You know? Well, and you're I, very funny. Oh, the, thank you. But I, I read... I, I always think the best writing is uh, when a person is speaking to you and that they understand everything you say. I'm not a fan of big words. Did you dictate it or write it? No, I did not dictate it. I, I, I mean, I, I, I read it out loud, though, often to myself after, because I think it only works if it's, if it's read aloud. I read aloud personally. I can't read faster than I can read aloud. Louis C.K., who writes uh, the, in, the forward to this book, says, the thing that drives me nuts about Norm is the powerful simplicity of his style. Norm has a beguiling humility that sneaks up and grabs you by the throat. <laughs> well, that's nice, too. Yeah, you've, you've always had that. <laughs> well, I've never been like a, you know, a powerhouse uh, stand-up that, you know, stalks the stage and preaches or anything like that because I, I don't feel I have anything to say. I feel that life, I guess my overall feeling is life is sort of absurd. It's absurd uh, where I am, 
Uh, don't you ever wake up, Larry, and feel it's absurd where you are in life? The whole thing is weird. <laughs> the whole thing, yeah. What kind of stand-up did you do? I do, still do stand-up. Larry. I know, but I don't. I haven't seen you. Yeah. Well, I started uh, to do stand-up. You know who's changed me in stand-up was Sam Kinison, because I was doing stand-up when I began um, strictly to get on television. So I go, what can I do about a cat or a dog? Or <laughs> And then I met Sam Kinison, and he told me, you can talk about anything you want. You know, you don't have to talk about losing your luggage at the airport. You can if you want, if it interests you. So um, I, I, I will talk in my stand-up, my entire stand-up set will just be about one thing. So my, uh, I did a special, and it was all about death, my fear of death. I have that too. Which you have, I know. Yes. But you have belief. Yes, so but it doesn't. <laughs> but it's a shaky faith. You know uh. what I mean? There's nothing in my Christianity that says I'm better than anyone else. It says the exact opposite. That I'm just like my friend Billy Joe Shaver, a old country singer. He says I'm just a whole chunk of coal, but I'm going to be a diamond someday. <laughs> and that's why I love that line. Yeah, well, I have a fear of not existing. Yes, but you know, the writer Nabokov said that he saw a picture one time, and it was a picture of before he was born, and it was a picture of his mother with his brother and sister that were older than him, but he had not been born yet. And he said when he saw that picture, there was no terror in him, even though he was looking at a picture where he didn't exist. But he didn't know anything, so. Right, he didn't, but to, looking at that picture didn't terrify him that he didn't exist. So he said, it, it won't terrify me Because I won't know. Yeah, because but you won't die. That, but the knowing that I won't know. Now, that, that's, that, yeah, that's, that's what right. drives yeah, me. Yeah, of course, right. I know I won't know, so. Yeah. No, if you were, a, like, if you were a dog or a cat. <laughs> here we go. They got it all figured out. Well, Martin Short said, when you slept last night, you could have been dead, right? Mm -hmm. So if you didn't wake up this morning, how would you know? Well, that's true, sir. And, and you know, nowadays, I've been looking into this, uh, maybe to allay your fears. At, uh, now, uh, a day, as my doctor tells me, they yeah. can put you to sleep, and you go to sleep. And uh, two weeks later, you don't wake up. But you, I mean, you don't wake up at all. But two weeks later, your heart stops. But you can go to sleep for two weeks and not have to endure howling anguish and pain or anything like no that. No cancer. It's all gone. Our guest is the one and only <laughs> Norm Macdonald. Truly, there's nothing like him. We're talking. This has been hysterical so far. And the dangers of being, <laughs> being called the best. We hope we haven't depressed you. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about major mental illness. Stay with us. We're back with Norm Macdonald. A runaway bestseller will be Norm Macdonald based on a true story, a memoir. You uh, you had a very poor childhood. Do you bring that to your comedy? Do you bring that to based on a true story? Uh, yeah, in my book I talk about it because um, I, I was nothing... Uh, I, when you're really poor, you don't expect anything of yourself and you're, you're uh, happy with any uh, measure of success. And uh, it's only as you get more successful that you start to envy and, uh, you know what I mean? And especially in this town, uh, I always think, because you look at people that, uh, you know, have more money and success than you do that maybe aren't as talented as, as you are, Larry. But um, you're comparing, you shouldn't be comparing. You know, you should just be, you should just go, well, if I was 20 years old, would I take where I am now? And then, of course, you would. I mean, I feel I would, at least. So, do you, don't you feel successful? Yes, because I'm not, I'm not a furnace of ambition or anything where I'm, I've met people like, when I was at Saturday Night Live, I was just happy to be at Saturday Night Live. When I did my first letterman, I was happy to do my first letterman. I never had my foot, one foot in and one foot out. I was never thinking of the next step, you know? I never had a grand Needed a, career arc, yeah. What brought you down, gambling? Well, some, some have said it's been the ruin of me, Larry. The ruin? But I don't. What I, did you gamble on? I gambled on uh, sports. And I will tell you this, you should never bet football because the ball ain't round. I keep telling people this. And so the ball hits and then it does all kinds of crazy things and uh, you don't know. You want to bet on a, a game with a round ball. But anyways, I quit. I don't know why I'm even saying this. <laughs> but I did go broke twice. And uh, I must say that it was a very cleansing feeling in a way. Cleansing? 
Yeah. Well, when you went broke, you had to make money again, right? Yeah. Because you had to go broke twice. Yeah, that's true. Why did true. you go back to gambling <laughs> after you made money, knowing that you went broke? Well, it's that's like insanity. A, on a grander scale, though, how does uh, uh, Donald Trump lose $900 million? It's because he has the guts to, to make the gamble. You know what I mean? Now, most people, I think, if they got to $3 billion or $4 billion or whatever Mr. Trump is worth, would just sit on it. But uh, he's willing to throw the dice, you know. And what I mean? then also take it off his income tax and not pay income tax when he makes it. Yeah, but that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Trump is a friend of yours. Yes. I think you would. I know him casually. I've never seen from the man in my uh, uh, meetings with him uh, any trace of racism. No. Um, any trace of malice. So what do you make of his campaign, which has traces of racism and traces of malice? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if he's... He's obviously playing some sort of character, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, he's got a part here. The part is he's running for president. Yes, right? exactly. And uh, so I don't know whether to be afraid or not, you know what I mean? Uh, um, you know, there have been in this country times when people like Huey Long or somebody like that came along. Uh, that that raised a little uh, terror in people, um, but I I think personally our democracy is bulletproof to any sort of uh, any chance at fascism, and I don't think Donald Trump even is going that way. But if people are afraid of that, I, th I think our democracy um, denies that. Do you think he's demagogic? That's not a word, is it? Demagogic? Yeah, that's a word. Um, well, I guess by dictionary definition he is, you know, because he's... Uh, I think uh, maybe the ruin of Donald Trump will be this addiction to um, playing the halls. You know what I mean? That maybe he doesn't want to be president of the United States as much as he wants to be the president of whatever room he's playing that night, <laughs> <laughs> which I can understand as a stand-up comedian, which maybe you can understand, because yeah. you go and you speak, yeah. and it's aphrodisiacal, you know, to get in front of these people and have... It's the biggest high of all. It's amazing. And they so, laugh, that's... Right? right absolutely. There's no bigger joy. So, I, so when he gets the applause, yeah, I that's th enough. I think that's what he loves. I don't know if he wants to be president. What I... Uh, I, I don't think he'll win. I think he will start uh, a giant... Um, television network. Yeah, him and uh, Roger Ailes. And yes, and Larry King, maybe. The Trump Network. The Trump Network. And how about Norm Macdonald well, with Comedy Specials Weekly? I would be your apprentice <laughs> on the Trump Network. What's the biggest risk Norm has taken? We'll find out. And about the future of The Last Comic Standing. Oh, yeah. The book is based on a true story. It's Norm Macdonald, a memoir. We'll be right back. We're back with Norm Macdonald. You're going to love this book. I can't wait to get it. Just breezing through it. It's based on a true story. It's a memoir. So it's a novel, but it's not a novel. It's an American Dostoevsky. That's high praise, but that's what people have said. You recently said of Trump, by the way, you've got to be able to apologize and you've got to be able to say you're wrong. You have to have some humility. Why doesn't he seem to have that? I don't know. I, 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 I know him and I don't know. I mean... Uh, Maybe. Did you try to take a picture with him and he snubbed you? Yeah, <laughs> well, it was a kind of a funny thing. I was on uh, uh, the the Jimmy Fallon show, uh, and I was I was watching it. You know, he was the first guest, and people, you know, uh, were were the next day saying that Jimmy was too easy. You know, as if Jimmy's uh, Douglas Edwards or something. You know, he's just a, a guy. You know, yeah. just a kid that loves everybody. So he's not. He's not gonna. Uh, he may have lost his chance to, you know, moderate, meet the press. But I don't <laughs> think that was ever his goal. But uh, uh, yeah. Don so Donald came. I was only a couple minutes between when one guest leaves and the other comes in. So I was in the hall with him. He was with the Secret Service, and he knows me. You know. So I said, Donald, a picture. And he goes, I love this guy. You know, and he's talking to the Secret Service guys. He goes, I love this guy. I'll take a picture. Just one minute. And he turned around, and then he walked to the elevator and got on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I did make a few comments about him, and I haven't spoken to him since then. And I always wonder, oh, gosh, I hope he didn't read those comments and uh, oh. like his humility, you know. Because I, I do think that humility is a, is a huge, um, important thing for a person to have, you know. Maybe one of the most important. Oh, uh, well, everybody will be humble 
sometime. One day, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get. Right you're that. not a big fan of Hillary's, are you? Right. No, I don't like. Why Hillary. don't you like I Hillary? Hillary? I don't like her anyway. Well, because I think she's the most corrupt uh, person that we've ever had in the White House. I mean, there's there's so many um, uh, terrible things that she's done that we forget. But there was one that I don't know why this was swept under the rug. But you know, she went into the IRS. Uh, and, and looked at political enemies' um, tax returns. Nixon did that. Yeah, well, that, absolutely Nixon did that. Yeah, it's a, she's, well, a, she's a Nixonian figure. You know, that Hillary, you know figure. that Hillary did that? Well, as much as I know anything. I mean, it was, this was reported, and it was a, it was a, a thing for a very short time because the news cycles go so quickly. And maybe nowadays, uh, Nixon, you know, Watergate would have just been a... Uh, a Friday night story that would have disappeared on Monday. You were a big hit as a judge on Last Comic Standing. What was that last? What was that like for you to judge other comics? It was not a lot of fun, you know. Uh, it was not. No, because you know, you're not supposed to judge people, you know. But uh, that was my task, so I took it seriously, and uh, I tried to help the comedians. What I tried to do is help them. Tell them just because I've been a comedian for 30 years, not because I'm better than them, but I am better than them, but just because of the thousands of hours I've done stand up. So, what I try to do is just uh, offer them advice, try to help their jokes, um, try to t tell them to quit and not do comedy ever again, you know, because I think that's sometimes good advice. Yeah. I don't think follow your dreams is always the best thing. So your dreams may be nightmares. <laughs> Thank right. God for unanswered dreams, Larry. As a comedian, how do you work past the idea that when you're on tour and you're telling the same jokes night after night, do you still get the same kick out of it? Yeah. Well, I don't tell the same jokes night you after change. night. change. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't done very many. I've only done one stand-up special. Now, other guys have done 50. Mm. But um, um, I was influenced in this by Jay Leno, who, uh, when I started, was the was top great comedian. great stand-up. Like Elvis, you know. So and Jay Leno. He never did a stand-up special. There is no HBO special of Jay Leno, which is surprising. But he explained to me why, because he has his jokes, and he had amortized it out, that his jokes were worth so much, you know, a piece over a year, you know, 50,000 to 100,000, But he, and he wasn't going to do a special. When you see him in person, though, he's a great monologist. On television, oh, it can find him. He stalks the stage, yeah. and runs his hands through oh, his hair, yeah, yeah. and he's funny. Uh, very funny. And I've seen at the improv, you know, like uh, uh, Jerry Seinfeld will come in, get huge applause. You know, they always get five minutes applause before they speak. And then he does his stand up and he does okay. You know what I mean? But he just stands there. But then, like you say, Leno will come in and he's like Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, you know oh. I mean? He gives it all. And uh, rapid fire, too. Yeah, so funny and so giving to the audience. And you talk about humility, there's a guy with grand humility for for having possessed such a, a high job. We're going to play a little game of If You Only Knew, Norm. If don't, You Only don't, Knew. Don't panic. Okay. Childhood celebrity crush. You mean a girl? No, oh, is that what it means? Yeah. Oh, it was... <laughs> yeah, it was there a, like an actress you... Oh, of course, yes. Anne margaret Anne... Oh, Still not around. bad. Yeah. You like Anne margaret God, oh, who least. doesn't? I Big, like the old-timey, you know? I like the old-timey curves on a lady. And the way she danced. Oh. God. Biggest risk you've ever taken? Uh, I, I think it was with gambling. I, I bet everything I had was... What was the most you ever bet on an event? Uh, $400,000. Who was it on? Atlanta Falcons against the uh, Denver Broncos, 1990. Who was favored? <laughs> the uh, Broncos were favored <laughs> by uh, uh, something like 12 and a half points. You took I, Atlanta. I took the money line. That paid Ooh. three to one or something like that, and lost. Mm. Do you get depressed when you lost? Oh yeah, you can mm. fall into depression. That's why I quit gambling. Really, uh, there's too much anxiety and too much depression, and so, all for nothing. At the something end. you wish you were better at. I wish I was better at um, being kind to people. I guess. What do you sing in the shower? Willie the Wandering Gypsy and Me, by um, by Waylon Jennings. You're a little weird, you know. <laughs> what uh, characteristic? Liking country music doesn't no, make that's you a, weird. Characteristic. You have put me in a shower singing. <laughs> You're the guy that did it. Characteristic you value most in others. Uh, well, generosity and kindness. And what about the? What do you admire most in yourself? Uh, the times that I exhibit 
those qualities that I exhibit too rarely, a generosity and kindness. You write in your memoir that your dad told great jokes. Yes. You have a favorite quick joke of your dad's? Uh, oh, yes. He said, uh, um, the old fella, uh, that's how he would talk. Sometimes he would go, have, wait, try to think of the guy's name. He'd go, there's a fella named, what was his name? i go, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so he goes, a fella, Bill, and he couldn't uh, remember. So he went to the doctor to get uh, p memory pills, and they worked. And then the other, his friend come over, Elmer, he says, uh, what were those memory pills you got? I, I want to get them. What are they called? Oh, Elmer says, I can't, <laughs> can't remember. He says, what's the name of that uh, flower? The other guy goes, I don't know. There's lots of flowers. A tulip? No, Elmer says, that's not it. It's a, uh, you put it in a, for a, oh, a, a carnation. No, Elmer says, that's not it. Long stemmed, you know, romantic flower. Oh, ro a rose. Yes, Elmer says, Rose, what was the name of that medication the doctor gave <laughs> That's a great joke. What makes you angry? I don't like, uh, uh, I don't like people that treat people under them badly and uh, kiss uh, up to people that are above them. Kiss ass. Kiss ass, yeah. Yeah. Who would you trade places with for a day? Uh, I guess Donald Trump. <laughs> just for the money, or yeah, just just to know what it is to live in a, a, a palace and uh, have uh, you know thousands of people beat each other up. At and Melania, oh. <laughs> and Melania gets thrown in the deal too. What's something people don't know about you? I'm a deeply closeted gay guy. No kidding. Well, I'm not coming out though. Wait a minute. What are you revealing here today? I'm, I'm not revealing anything. I'm saying I'm deeply closeted. Well, that means you're gay. Well, I, I wouldn't say that. Why would I say that? I'm deeply closeted. No, but I, that means you're very, very gay, but you don't want to come out. You're so closeted. That I refuse to say I'm gay. Right. Exactly. But that, doesn't that mean you're gay? Hey, 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 easy, buddy. <laughs> oh, this book will reveal much. <laughs> Noah McDonald's based on a true story, a memoir. We can't get to wait to get on this. When we come back. It's all in the book. You asked, he's answering. Norm will tack some of your many social media questions after the break. <laughs> with Norm MacDonald, the book, we'll show it again, based on a true story, a memoir. Louis C.K., Louis. Louis C.K. wrote the Indian. All right, here are some social media questions for the great Norm MacDonald. Gina loves hugs. That's her mock and Gina mock. loves hugs. What's your favorite joke bit? One, what, is there something that makes you laugh all the time? A joke? A joke or a skit or a, a thought, anything that makes you just... Well, I'm, you know what, who always makes me laugh is the comedy team Bob and Ray. Me uh, too. Oh, really? I used to go watch them work. You saw them live? Oh, I sure did. I interviewed Bob. Uh -huh. I would go, they would let me in because I always wanted to be in radio. Uh -huh. So I would go to these radio and they'd let me in and watch them do the voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All oh, the, the best. Incredible. Lee Ballou. Yes, <laughs> Lee Ballou because they cut the yeah, first they part cut out. The first. But uh, Ray Goulding, I love because I. He had that broadcaster voice, like that Ed McMahon, you know, voice, but, but they do comedy. Our organization, uh, Bob and Ray, is uh, the SLTA. SLTA. What does that stand for? The slow. The slow. Talkers. Slow talkers of America. Of. Of America. 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 <laughs> <laughs> At GPU Meatball wants to know what you'd like to be remembered for. Um, huh. um, I think I'd like to be, I think I wrote this book to be remembered by the book. I think I'll probably write three more books in my life and probably be most remembered as an author in my second life. Good Bar CA asks what it's like to be a Christian conservative comedian. Yes, well, I'm Are not... Are you that? No, sir, I'm not. Then uh, why did he ask that? I don't know that. Well, I'll tell you why, because they've sometimes labeled me that. 
because, uh, you know, I have opinions that don't fit into either party. So sometimes they'll hear it and they'll, they'll call you a conservative because they like to say things like that. But I'm not conservative. Are you Christian? And uh, I'm um, on a journey, a spiritual journey, let's say that. I believe there's a God, but I'm unsure of his nature. So uh, I consult a rabbi often because they're the people that know the Bible the best. And uh, uh, so I've had my time, uh, uh, I, I've had more time with Judaism than with any other religion. So uh, well, that's my religion. That's your birth. religion. Of birth, but, I, but you I, don't believe in anything. I don't believe in anything. But I, I will say this about the Jewish people, that I love that they live uh, by their beliefs. Whereas some Christians, it's just do what you want and get forgiven. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of prefer the, the living day-to-day -day, uh, rituals and beliefs. What always grabbed me about Christianity was how Mary convinced Joseph. <laughs> I don't even have to finish this sentence. <laughs> How did Mary do? <laughs> anyway. Well, that kid must have been pretty special. <laughs> you know, if, if listen, if three people show up to your house, one of them has f gold. And myrrh. Guy has myrrh. <laughs> you know, you're like, well, you don't oh. know what it is. And so you say, listen, uh, the guy with the frankincense and the myrrh, you could beat it. The guy with the, the gold, gold. Come on in. Come on in. We can talk. Oblivious One tweets, I would love hearing anything about Norm's amazing gambling run in Atlantic City. Oh, yes, that's what happened. A friend of mine is very smart, said, I've been very lucky with gambling. I've never won. And uh, it was a very profound thing, you know what I mean? Because if you never win, you don't get hooked. But I had a big win. <laughs> so uh, I, I was a casual gambler, you know, would go and bet $25 on uh, blackjack. I hit a craps table, I went on a gigantic run, won, you know, six figures. And ever since then, you can't go back. You know what I mean? If you win that much money, you can't go back to $25 bets. Over 100000 yeah. yeah. Just, just, just over. Just Did over. you get a little nervous walking out with the cash? I was afraid. I didn't know you were allowed to win that much. So at the craps table, I kept putting the chips in my pocket, you know, because this guy was rolling for I don't know the game. And I, I put money down, and then the, uh, I only had $100. I just put it down, and then I won, and the guy said, you want to press it? And then I didn't want to look stupid. I go, what do you think? <laughs> so the guy pressed it. He pressed every bet. And anyways, all of a sudden, they were just handing me huge amounts of money. Yeah, I got scared. I started pocketing it. And then I remember at the end, I go, man, I must have won $15,000. And the guy goes, you want a hell of a lot more than that, fella. <laughs> and I went, and it was Atlantic City. They don't escort you to your car oh, or anything Vegas like that. They do. <laughs> yeah, you just drive into hell. When you get out of that casino, <laughs> just every sign says, we'll buy your, go you know, your gold from your teeth. You know, <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> and Dr. L. Cartman wants to know how you feel about the name Norm. Would you change it? To yes. Why in a second. you don't like Norm? Don't like it. I have a sort of a theory that your name uh, maybe uh, contributes to your self-worth uh, or your uh, self-esteem because it's the way you see it in popular culture, you know? Now, Norm, when I was young, there was a guy, very young, there was a guy on Peyton Place that Chris Connolly played, Norman, you know, and he was kind of like a deeply closeted man. And uh, then there was Norman Bates, Norm from Cheers. They were all fools or deeply closeted homosexuals. Norman, where are you? Uh, starring that was Red a funny Fox. play. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Norman, is that you? Norman, is that you? That was a funny play. That's what I'm thinking. That's the punchline of yes. that play. Yes, and he's gay. Yeah. So anyways, you know, you see enough of these deeply closeted gay guys named Norm, all of a sudden you go, wait a second, am I deeply closeted? In fact, you admitted earlier in this interview that you are. I admitted that I was deeply closeted, but I will never admit I'm gay. So you're deeply closeted about what? Being gay. Thanks very much, Norm. Yes, sir. So much insight. <laughs> it's all You'll get book. more when you read the book. Thanks to my guest, Norm MacDonald. Norm MacDonald, based on a true story, is available now. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. And I'll see you next time. Always a pleasure to be on your show. Always great to have you. The master.